Hello members one and all of the Salivation Nation with a slightly different video that is still related to precious metals but also technology, physics, and the future. And you know this is a, a subject that has kind of come about and been studied for a while and, and that is where we're going to get to a point where superconductivity will be uh, the norm rather than an exception. Well, in this article dated way back in 2014, which seems like quite a while ago, superconductivity achieved at room temperature for a fraction of a second. And for those of you who don't know, superconductivity is a, a way to be able to essentially uh, create a conductivity of electrical current with very little to zero resistance. And so using a pulse of infrared light Physicists at the Max Planck Institute for the Structure of Dynamics of Matter have turned an insulating material into a superconductor even at room temperature, a property that was retained for only a few millionths of a microsecond. Superconductivity is a state where a material conduct, can conduct electricity with absolute zero resistance with no loss of energy. Traditionally, the state has been demonstrated in metals and ceramics, which typically need to be cooled near to absolute zero temperature, which is negative 273 degrees Celsius, measured on the Kelvin scale, by the way. This uh, breakthrough is fundamental research uh, that might spark further interest in achieving the much sought after superconductivity state at room temperature. Um, if you've ever touched a high power cable or even a simple appliance like a hair dryer, you've certainly felt how hot it can be. The heating you're sensing is due to the resistance of materials that various wires and electrical components are made. When electricity passes through these materials, impurities cause electrons to bounce off into atoms, causing them to shift position. This motion is translated into temperature which is the vibration of atoms. Heat is wasted energy unless you wanted that way for heating. And even power lines that use very good conductors lose roughly 6% of the power they transmit. As such, there are many fields that are interested in using materials that have as little resistance as possible. Ideally, zero. Superconductivity was first discovered by Dutch physicist Heike uh, Kamerling Ohms in 1911 when he and his students found that the electrical resistance of a mercury wire cooled to about 3.6 degrees above absolute zero, which is measured on the Kelvin scale, made a dramatic plunge. The drop was enormous. Enorm enormous. The resistance became at least 20,000 times smaller. Since then, much work was made to improve our understanding of this peculiar state. We now know that superconductivity is a quantum mechanical phenomenon characterized the, by the Meissner effect, the complete ejection of magnetic field lines from the interior of the superconductor as it transitions into the superconducting state. Not all metals can be superconductive. While most metals, like copper or silver, also experience a severe drop in electrical resistance when cooled near to absolute zero, they still show some resistance. While only a couple of materials capable of reaching superconductivity state were identified in 1980, today of a whole slew of new alloys have been recognized thanks to uh, increased interest in the subject. These include niobium titanium, germanium niobium, and niobium nitride. Um, the most promising materials belong to a class based on ceramic materials. And, uh, so, in effect, superconductivity can be segmented in low-temperature conductors and so-called high-temperature conductors. But even the best of the latter must be cooled below negative 40 degrees Celsius to absolute near-zero resistance. While we now understand how low-temperature conductors like lead work, the same, uh, or like lead work, can, can't be said about the high-temperature ones as many of its mechanisms remain a mystery. So, there's still some... Stuff and obviously it takes great amount of energy to cool, uh, to have that kind of environment, the kind of cool environment. So this is why that was such a breakthrough. And the reason why I brought this up is because silver uh, can be used, and as some of you have seen in my previous videos about uh, can silver 
can the ice test help determine real silver? Because silver is also super conductive as far as heat, also with cooling as well. Um, and so perhaps even if silver itself is not the conductor, maybe perhaps it can be the catalyst to cool the area around uh, where the said um, impulses take place. And with that being said, we looked at this article that talks about how MIT physicists have turned graphene into a powerful superconductor. By the way, before I continue, I want to thank ex Bronco fan for bringing this subject to my attention. It's quite fascinating indeed. And we're going to talk a little bit about what the future will be and does this threaten silver because graphene as uh has been mentioned many times uh, at least in the comment section here when i talk about silver being used as a commodity and for the industrial usage and the like and graphene could replace it in some ways and this kind of bolsters that theory that graphene has already been received a lot of attention since scientists first discovered the wonder material and now it's just been given another boost as a physicist at MIT uncover a, a way to use graphene as a powerful superconductor. At just one atom thick, the stronger than steel and tougher than diamonds, it's no real surprise that we find this material to be even more amazing. But now, for the first time ever, scientists can demonstrate the superconductive capabilities of graphene by putting it in contact with other superconductors. Well, regular conductors such as copper or silver are good for carrying an electrical current. Electrons bounce off defects in the material and lose energy as a consequence. So in other words, there's some resistance there, uh, especially at normal temperatures. But with superconductors, electrons don't lose any energy as they pair up and travel through the material as one. This is a big deal because if we can find a way to achieve superconductivity at room temperature, this will allow us to create much more efficient electronic devices and power lines. At the moment, scientists have only seen graphene become superconductive at super chilled states, but it's a start and it's still worth getting excited about. And uh, so there's kind of a, 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 a diagram that kind of shows what it looks like there from the... Um, from the MIT physicists have found that with a flake of graphene when brought to close proximity with, with two superconducting materials can inherit some of these materials and, and uh, create with those other materials for the superconducting qualities. As graphene is sandwiched between superconductors, its electrical state changes dramatically even at its center. And uh, that really kind of makes, makes it quite interesting to see um, how this will work and really how silver can be reintroduced in a new way, which is going to be what further we'll discuss uh, moving forward. But here it says, in a recent study carried out by MIT physicists, a flake of graphene was placed in between aluminum and chilled to around 20 millikelvin, which is negative 273.13 degrees Celsius or negative 459.6 degrees Fahrenheit to switch on the aluminum superconductive powers. Lead researcher Landry Brithio said, the superconductors are actually giving graphene some superconducting qualities. We found these electrons be can be dramatically affected by superconductors. And my guess, my question is, why didn't they use silver instead of aluminum? Because silver is uh, certainly much better and it cools. Uh, I've seen it. It can cool very quickly as well as heat up very quickly. Those, of, those who pour silver have seen that as well. Um, uh, what's even more important is that the electrons inside graphene act in pairs that allow materials that aren't electro traditionally superconductive to carry a supercurrent efficiently. Electrons in a superconductor dance harmoniously in pairs like a ballet, but the choreography in the left and right superconductors can be different. Pairs in the central graphene are frustrated as they try to satisfy both ways of dancing. These frustrated pairs are what physicists known as Andreev states, and they're carrying, carrying the supercurrent. It's a breakthrough in the world of physics, as it's the first time it's been possible to show the effect within the two-dimensional material. Moving forward, the findings from these experiments could help an error-proof quantum computer someday. There is a huge effort in the condensed physics for uh, community to look at the exotic quantum electronic states, said Breithrou. So, 
it's quite interesting and uh, one little tag and note that how superconductivity could be used for machine learning and artificial intelligence because just as the synapses in our brain the more those synapses are used uh, to carry the carry current it becomes easier to learn the same thing could occur in a uh, in biomechanics or in this state you know electrical current through electrical transmissions through artificial intelligence that could uh, help machines to learn which in some ways could be actually kind of scary but regardless the point of this is that as graphene could replace silver in some applications it could also uh, help create new uses for silver perhaps there may be ways to use silver and maybe more of it to support graphene um, to keep it cool and the like like they're talking about with aluminum uh, and who knows maybe it's just a with this with the let this electrode the aluminum electrode here in this diagram there may be other ways perhaps graphene and silver mixed in here possibly could help uh, bolster it for cooling and the like but nonetheless uh, superconductivity is quite a fascinating subject uh, but there's other many other applications that silver uh, can be used for um, and maybe new uses that silver has not been discovered yet because certainly physicists will find ways silver is such a unique metal uh, more unique than any other metal out there in my opinion and its diverse capabilities and I believe that we're probably still discovering new ways to use silver in, in industry in biotechnology quite fascinating indeed so post your thoughts below I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to you all and also ex Broncos fan for bringing this some of this information to light I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude and encourage you to please rate comment and subscribe